Y'all know how we start every show. Well, what's up with that dude? Well, you can hear it in my voice, right? First game of our basketball season. And for our little team, we're the Lakers this year. Ugh, ugh, oh, pfft, ugh, pfft, ugh, sorry. <laughs> well, my assistant coach, who is now like really my head coach, uh, Jesse Buss. Yeah, one of the Lakers owners and his son, little man. Little Jay to the mwah, my little dog. Uh, he a beast. Um, yeah, we got a squad. Um, but you hear it in my voice. I can't help myself. I see a kid that needs some coaching, needs some life lessons, know that he got to turn his engine on as soon as he crosses that line and gets on that court. Uh, I got to yell it because he can't hear me if I whisper. <laughs> and I'm not yelling at him. I'm yelling to him. Hey, man, keep going. Like, you know, these kids, they, they get – the ball stolen. They just sit there and look at their palms or blame the ball. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. You better go get back on defense. You better give some effort, right? So um, it's funny because I, I really, like, took a step back. And it started with my voice. I can't lie. But two, um, Jesse knows more basketball than me. Let's just say <laughs> But three, um, I like how he coaches. Um, and four, he's a great friend. And five, um. I got football, and it's like, I don't know, it's just a shared experience now. I let them run the drills and run the practices and coaching it. Like, I just, I, I, for real, I was masquerading as a basketball coach. Really, I'm over here being a, a, a basketball counselor. Like, I was telling the kids basketball. But in reality, I was trying to coach them up in life. And then I got a real coach, basically. And I was like, let him do it, man. He, he's good. He's a good dude. And, um, it feels a little weird. Can't lie to y'all. Y'all can hear it in my voice. You can hear it in my spirit. I'm like, damn, I'm taking a step back. I'm taking a seat back. <laughs> oh, man, back seat. Man. But as long as we keep rolling and doing it the right way and the team is winning, I ain't mad with it. After that, I uh, went and played tennis again. Consecutive weekends, I played tennis with my man, Dr. Scott Cohen. Yeah. Um, let's just say that didn't go as well. <laughs> Let me stop. I, I mean, tennis is played out to me anyway, unless I'm watching it. I can't play tennis no more, and I don't think it's as good as pickleball. Why? Because pickleball, no matter how sorry you are, how good you are, oh, we could play. I mean, I could be sorry, and you could be a beast. And you're going to wear me out, but it's going to be a more fun wear out. Like, you're going to – we're going to have more fun. It's going to be funner. Like, you know what I mean? More gooder, as they say. <laughs> like, tennis, is somebody good? Ace. Like, I mean, pop, ball went by you. I don't even know. Like, what? Hit the net. Ah. Now your racket looking like John McEnroe grabbed it. And it's like all beat up. And you just, man, tennis is hard. And it's bigger. And it's just hard on the body. But I do it because Scott likes it. And two, uh, my heart likes it. It is better. It's a better workout. Pickleball gets you going now. Don't trip, Crip. Um, but at the same time, it is a different animal when it comes to tennis. So I did it for the heart rate. Plus, um, after that, we both go into a birthday party for our boy, Sebastian Maniscalco. Y'all know the comedian, hilarious. He's turning 50, so we about to pound him. So I was like, nah, I got to get a real workout. In. I got to get flat. I got to get the six-pack flat um, that I don't have, and then I could go drink it up and get my beer belly. So uh, we went and party, and um, we're going to get it in. All right, y'all. Y'all know how we finish every show. We finish it with a Wiley-ism, yeah. Air your problems. So you don't have to wear your problems. Ah, all the married men in the house make some noise. Yeah. All the married ladies in the house. Let me hear you scream. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, this marriage one-on-one. Air your problems so you don't have to wear your problems. I've seen a lot of marriages and a lot of them dissolve and end and don't go well because somehow, some way, they don't like to engage in battle. Like in the moment, I told you my boy, my boy, Jabari was like, dog. One time he tapped me on the show. He said, dog, stall her out. I was like, no. First of all, you sit your divorced ass down. <laughs> I don't need your advice, fool. Second of all, um, dog, this is how I do it. I'm not, I'm not about to let something fester so I can explode on my wife. She going to know right there, baby. Mm -mm. And she go, and then she do it to me, baby. Mm -mm. This morning she checked me. I was mad too. She was like, um, is there any reason why you left the green trash can outside to keep the gate ajar? And I was like, no. And she's like, oh. And then so me, my ego, like, yo, why don't you get back? Like, balance this out. I said, baby, um, did you close it? And she was like, no. I didn't know why you had it open. I was like, you didn't text me? Because in our house, we text. <laughs> we right in the next room. We text each other. Um, and I was like, why didn't you text me? And I could have told you right, right quick, like, yo, close it. Oh, I was in a rush. I didn't want to do it. I was like, oh. 
Now, she won that case. She won that, that back and forth. But still, we went back and forth that quick. And now we kissing, smiling. She's spinning. She upstairs with the itty bitties. That's life. Move on. It took her a while to get there, though, because she wasn't used to this. Because I'm always used to this. My family, we confront. You know what I'm saying? Everybody passing the greens. Oh, okay. Everybody over there passing the mac and cheese. Oh, that's great. Oh, what'd you say? Her. Like, party. DJ, stop the music. What'd you say? And I grew up that way. We saying what you say in that moment. Not like with beef, but just what did you say? Then, if we hear it correctly, what did you mean by that? Then, if we know what you meant and we heard you correctly, what's up? <laughs> We disagree. Let's talk. <laughs> People think it doesn't work in the short term, but it works for the long term. I have amazing relationships. The best friends I was talking about, second grade, high school and college. I got OG homies. And I kick it with everybody else, but I'm talking about my best. Like, I'm just, the ones from me from the beginning are still with me to the end. Because I'm going to tell them in the moment. Hey, dog, stop playing. So all you guys out there, man, you got any issues, man, y'all got to get y'all, y'all, y'all moments right. Stop letting stuff build up and fester. And then you start wearing it. And then you start being passive aggressive. And then you start not talking to people and being short. All that because you just didn't tell this fool, shut up. Or don't bring that knucklehead around me again. You think I was going to leave that party that night and not tell him? Don't ever bring this little dude around me again unless he, he wises up and matures. If not, I'm going to be the one over here. You ain't got to call your cousin and brother, girl. I'm here. <laughs> I don't like people like that. So air your problems so you don't have to wear your problems.